Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's review we're going to be taking a look at the Transformers Kingdom Voyager Class Optimus Primal, a figure that I know many of you, myself included, have been eagerly awaiting ever since the first initial promo images did drop. Taking a look firstly here at the packaging in an attempt to drastically reduce the amount of plastic used on Hasbro packaging, I would say that this box here is perhaps 90% cardboard which I personally do not have an issue with whatsoever as in my opinion as far as box art is concerned this is the best package that we have seen from the War for Cybertron so far. You can see that we've got an exceptional image here of Optimus Primal in his robot mode as well as of course here in his gorilla mode. We of course do have the Ark which appears to have crash landed in the volcano which I'm pretty sure we'll get more of a backstory of when we actually do watch the Kingdom show. We do get a very small plastic window here at the top which showcases the top half of the character. We of course do get Optimus Primal. As we take a look here at the side of the packaging we've got that exceptional Kingdom artwork which is a mix of the traditional G1 characters in with the Beast Wars characters and honestly Kingdom is for sure the most anticipated chapter of the War for Cybertron so far for me as I'm really looking forward to seeing as to how some of these characters do interact with one another. As we take a look here at the back of the box we of course have product shots of Optimus Primal in robot mode as well as of course here in his ape mode and then of course as we take a look here at the top of the box we do have the Maximal Insignia. So without further ado let's crack Optimus Primal open and see what awaits us inside. And so here we have Optimus Primal opened up and out of the packaging and for the first Voyager to be introduced as part of the Kingdom line I for sure do believe that we are off to a great start. Now before we take a look at Optimus Primal himself I first of all want to very quickly give you a rundown of the now included collector's card. I do believe that these are randomly packed in with all of the Kingdom figures besides the core class and I think that they are a really nice added bonus. You can see that here I got the arc which appears to be crash landing. We of course do get the Kingdom logo and as we take a look here at the back of the card we've also got an image of the golden disc which I'm pretty sure will play a key role in the upcoming Netflix series. A special feature that these cards do indeed include is that I do believe they reveal the fate of the character or spacecraft that you do get. So here for the arc you can see that we've got it crash landing and then as we just peel this foil off it has crash landed where I imagine we will be introduced to some of the Beast Wars characters. So these may pose as being spoilers for the Netflix series. I personally am completely unsure at this present time but definitely a nice inclusion and I'm pretty sure that as the Kingdom line does progress we are going to be getting some really nice looking character cards so definitely looking forward to seeing as to what they have up their sleeves with these but getting here to Optimus Primal himself it is so refreshing to get a figure in the first wave which isn't a rehash of the G1 Optimus Prime nor Megatron don't get me wrong I love the Siege and Earthrise Optimus Prime but there are only so many times that you can do that character before it becomes rinse and repeat and I think that what Hasbro are doing with the Kingdom line by introducing some of the Beast Wars characters is not only the boldest direction they have ever taken a main line in but it's also an incredible refreshing direction and one that I am all for. Taking a look here at Optimus Primal in his robot mode, once again it does appear as if though Hasbro have taken heavy inspiration from his original Beast Wars appearance. It is merely just the Beast Mode slash Ape Mode which has got a slightly more stylistic approach in order to better match the realistic aesthetic that these Kingdom figures are going for. As we take a look here at Optimus Primal's head sculpt, once again similarly to Black Arachnia, it looks tremendous in my opinion. I think the paint apps as well as the sculpt work have come out really nicely. You can see the mouth guard there looks very impressive as so does the sculpt work there for the eyes we do indeed get the shoulder cannons here which can be retracted however I'll demonstrate that once we get down to the transformation something which I must mention straight away is how well done the texture and detailing is on the fur that we've got scattered throughout the figure of course this will make up the main body of Optimus Primal in his ape mode but here for the robot mode I think that it looks really well done as we take a look here at the chest piece you can see that once again we've got some exceptional detail as well as paintwork if I had any critiques with this it's that when in robot mode it does appear rather flat and it doesn't have the same curvature that we will get when we transform him into ape mode. I do imagine that this was a compromise solely to amplify the look of his ape mode but it would have been nice if this section could have had an additional panel which could have folded out and just concealed this hollow gap. As we take a look here at the biceps you can see there's some really nice looking red and white paint apps and as we take a look here to the forearms this figure does indeed have retractable and deployable arm cannons which I think is such a nice attention to detail and just to demonstrate how this works you simply just want to push it down in order to retract it seamlessly into the forearm and you can see that once again the texture and detail does continue and in order to deploy it you simply just push on this section here and it will indeed raise up and of course you can extend it on not only a hinge joint but also on this swivel joint here at the top. The detail and the texturing here to the fingers once again I believe has come out really nicely and I love how they've actually sculpted in the fingernails and as we take a look here down to the lower section of Optimus Primal I do apologize if this is something that you are unable to unsee but this really to me does remind me of Sid from the Ice Age movies you can see you've got the eyes 
eyes there, the nose as well as the mouth, and I think that the detail as well as the paintwork on this has once again come out really well. As we take a look here at the fires, this is where I would give you a word of caution in actually maneuvering some of the joints around. As you can see, I do have some really ugly paint scratching here, which is merely down to the fact that there isn't a lot of clearance in here when you are actually hinging the legs up and down. So once again, definitely take your time when handling this figure in order to avoid some paint scratching, but you can see that for the most part, the white paint apps have come out really nicely, and you can also see some nice texturing and detail here to the fur. We of course do get the metallic red here for the knee pad, and then as we take a look here down to the lower section of the leg, not only does the fur detailing continue, but we also do get some really nice piston detailing here, which does indeed work in accordance with some of the hinge joints that we do get here for the feet, which I'll go over once we get to the articulation segment, and you can see that here finally for the foot, very mechanical in terms of the design, however of course very accurate to his original Beast Wars design. As we take a look here at the back of the figure, for the most part I think that he cleans up rather nicely. We do get this butt flap, which you are supposed to raise here for robot mode, which I believe is so that we can reveal this flight stand port. However, personally, I tend to just keep it collapsed so that it looks a little bit more coherent with the rest of the sculpt, and so that we don't have this really massive looking flap just dangling here at the back. I do believe that this section here compresses rather nicely, and just taking a look at Optimus Primal from a back perspective, there really isn't anything here that I believe sticks out too much, and as far as articulation is concerned, he is certainly a pleasant surprise. So we do get a ball joint here at the head, which can of course look left to right as well as look up and down. We of course do get full 360 rotation joints here at the arms as well as an intentional butterfly joint which I think is a great attention to detail. We can also hinge the arms out to 90. We do get a full 360 rotation here at the bicep as well as I believe a 180 degree of rotation only on a single hinge joint here at the elbow. The wrists can rotate the full 360 and you are also able to hinge the fingers open and closed which for a Voyager is something that really is unheard of besides a few recent figures. We also do get a full 360 rotation here at the waist. The legs can kick forwards that far as well as can kick back to that far. He can also do the splits. We get a full rotation here at the upper thigh as well as a 90 degree bend here at the knee. And then finally taking a look here at the feet, we of course do get the signature Wolf of Cybertron ankle rocker joints. However, due to the transformation you can hinge the toe up and down and once again you can see how that piston will move in accordance to the actual toe joint which as far as engineering is concerned I think is really well done. As far as accessories are concerned, we of course do get Optimus Primal's blades and I think that the detail on these once again have come out really nicely and they are of course very faithful to his original Beast Wars appearance. You can see that we do get some nice silver paint apps here for the actual main blade section and the rest of it has just been cast in a blue plastic. These can be held into the figure's hand and these can actually be held regardless of if you do have the palm opened and closed due to them actually sculpting the thumb area in a circular peg so you can just simply snap that into place like so and of course bringing out the other one. We can also place that in there or you can take them and actually store them on his back very similarly to the MP figure so you can see that we do get a slot there as well as a tab here and you simply just want to align that up appropriately and snap that in there nice and securely. So overall, as far as robot mode is concerned, I think that this is once again another really nice update on the Optimus Primal character design. Here for a very quick Optimus Prime mall size comparison, here we have the two Optimus Primes that were released for Siege and Earthrise alongside our now Kingdom Optimus Primal and I really do love the evolution between these characters. Personally, I think that maybe Optimus Primal should have become before Siege and Earthrise as the whole idea of Beast Wars is to me rather prehistoric so it should have definitely become before Earthrise but nonetheless I do think that these look really nice with one another. I have heard some people complain in regards to the scale here of Optimus Primal, however he was always on the shorter side in terms of scale in the original Beast Wars series and you couldn't have Optimus Primal being packaged as a deluxe figure that just would have been absurd and personally I wouldn't have liked it if he was the same size as each of these Voyagers as I don't believe he would have scaled all that well with the upcoming T-Rex Megatron and I personally believe that what he lacks in terms of scale he more than makes up for it in not only sculpt and detail but also in special features so certainly a great looking figure here for Optimus Primal. And here for a Kingdom Maximal size comparison, here we have Optimus Primal compared next to Deluxe Cheetor, as well as of course Core Class Rat Trap. And I go back to what I was mentioning earlier on in the review in regards to his scale being pretty much spot on to what we got in the original Beast Wars series. Whilst on the topic of comparisons and bringing other figures in, I want to show you how you can actually take the Paleotrex head and use it as the mace of Optimus Primal. I do believe that this here is a homage to Optimus Primal's original mace weapon, and I think that it is a really nice touch by Hasbro's part. Of course, you can take the Paleotrex Trex pieces and armor Optimus Primal up, mainly just in terms of weaponry, as unfortunately he doesn't have any 5mm 
centimeter ports on him whatsoever. And judging by some of the Kingdom artwork, we are definitely going to see Optimus Primal sport a look where it does appear as if though he has been armored up by Paleotrex. But nonetheless, once again, a really nice added touch here by Hasbro. And overall, as far as robot mode goes, I think that this is probably the best mainline Optimus Primal figure that we have ever gotten. Now, in regards to Optimus Primal's transformation, it is for sure on the more simplistic side when compared to other figures in the line. However, the instructions do actually show him having two alternate modes for his beast mode. There are different positions that you can orientate the joints in in order to get him either raised or lowered, and I'll show you both of those here in this review. So to kick things off, to begin with, of course, you're just going to want to compress here the arm cannons. What I then recommend doing is straightening out the elbows, and then we can take the shoulder pad pieces, and these will indeed clip into place on both sides, so just snap them in there nice and securely. We can then take the butt flap, and if it hasn't already, you can just bring this down like so. You're then going to want to take this back section, and this is a little trickier to do. I like to take the arms, take the back section, and just try your best to untab this entire region. We can then take this piece and it is held in via this pin. So you're going to want to pull this section here outwards, rotate this here all the way around, take the ape head, lift this up and also rotate this around as well. We can then take the shoulder cannons and you can also do this for robot mode if you wish and actually compress them in. We could even leave them out for ape mode if you wanted a really weaponized looking gorilla mode, but personally I prefer to just keep them in. We're then going to want to take the chest plate here and rotate this here all the way around in order to reveal the chest piece and you can see in what I was mentioning earlier on in regards to this having some curvature so that it better matches the overall design of the rest of the chest. We can then take this here, compress this in and then of course just bring this up and over, snap that into place and orientate the head in accordance. We can then take the waist, rotate this here all the way around and now what I recommend doing is taking the arms, pulling them forwards and basically what you're going to want to do here is ensure that the knee pad stays attached to this tab. So just to demonstrate that there is a tab, you're going to want to ensure that that is locked into place throughout the duration of this particular conversion as we're going to take the knee and bring this here all the way down take the leg, raise this up. And this is where I once again would be cautious of scratching the paint as you can see in there. Unfortunately, I have minced some of that off. So just take your time whilst lifting that up. Of course, come here to this side and repeat the exact same process. So just lift this here all up, ensuring that everything stays nice and aligned. We can then take the robot mode feet and these are just going to fold up onto the back of the legs. We can then take this section, hinge this up and around and just collapse that down in order to tidy up as much excess robot mode kibble as we possibly can. And with all that being said, here we have Optimus Primal fully transformed up into his ape mode. And for the most part, considering that this is a Voyager released at the mass retail price point, I think that Hasbro have done a really nice job. And honestly, I'm quite divided on whether or not I'm going to be displaying him in his ape mode or in his robot mode. Once again, they have gone for a little bit more of a realistic aesthetic. However, I am all for it. I think that it looks beautiful. And for those of you who are a fan of apes, I think you're going to have a field day with this as it looks really well done, especially in terms of the anatomy and the overall proportions here. I was really quite pleasantly surprised that some of the promo images did show this as being an ugly mess. Now, of course, there is some white robot mode kibble visible and you can see the knee pads clearly displayed here, but I think they've done their best to conceal it. And when we do get him into the other position, I do believe that it does a little bit of a better job in actually concealing some of this. But taking a look here at the head sculpt, very menacing in terms of its design and once again, very realistic. The irises on this figure have indeed been painted, unlike what we saw with Cheetor. So you you can see there that once again, this does look a little bit more realistic. I do also like how the eyes are slightly recessed into the sculpt as well. You can see the nose, which has been sculpted really well, as so have the mouth plate. And once again, this figure has just been completely covered in that fantastic sculpted and texturing detail. I really do believe that the fur has come out so nicely on this figure. You can see all the way throughout, it looks really well done. We, of course, do get the hydraulics and the feet of the robot mode clearly folded up. But once again, it is something that I can easily look past. And taking a look here at the details at the front. I think that for the most part, it has turned out really nicely. And of course, you can position him along the ground. And I think that this looks incredibly realistic to what a real life representation of an ape would look like. As far as articulation is concerned in this mode, we do get a ball joint here at the head. So this can look left to right as well as down and up. You can also swivel it side to side, which I think is a more than adequate range of motion. We do get full 360 rotation here at the arm. And you can also utilize the butterfly joint, which I really believe was intended for the ape mode so that you could get the arms in a little bit more of a 
closer in position, much like you would see from a real life representation. And then of course we do get the full 360 here as well as all of the same joints that we saw in the robot mode. So overall, as far as this mode is concerned, once again, I think that it has turned out really nicely. And here for a very quick Kingdom Maximal size comparison, here we have all of the current Maximal figures that have been released so far in their beast modes. And for the most part, I think that the scale here works rather nicely. Unfortunately, we are unable to tell as to whether or not this will be the scale in the upcoming Kingdom show, but I'm pretty sure that this is close enough to what we are going to see. I do believe that the scale between the Cheetor as well as the Ape is a little off. Maybe Cheetor is a little too big. However, once again, I don't think that it's too bad whatsoever. And as far as a real life representation between a rat and an ape would be concerned, this is way off. But I'm pretty sure that this is what we're going to see in the show. So at the moment, this is something that I can for sure work with. And I have never really been too fussed about scale. And I just think that overall, their beast modes look so well done. Now, finally, transforming Optimus Primal into his final configuration. To begin with, you just want to take the head here and lower it down. We can, of course, take the arms and also lower them down. It is merely just this section here which goes through some changes. So you're going to want to lift this section here up and this is where you're going to want to disengage this locking mechanism and just take this entire hinge joint here and shift this all the way back and then just bring this leg here forwards. We can then of course repeat the same process here on the opposite side. So just disengage that, utilize the double hinge joint and just arch that backwards. Of course, bring this section here down straighten all of this out keep that concealed at the back and there we have optimus primal in a little bit more of a neutral more upright looking pose and once again i think that they've got the posing pretty much spot on of course you can manipulate some of the joints around in order to better match a real life representation i do quite like to hinge the butterfly joints down in order to make the arms look as if though they're coming a little bit closer into the torso but a really nice looking ape and it is here that i think you can truly appreciate the overall design as well as the proportions that this figure does indeed have once again just giving you a very quick rundown of how he looks here from the front. I think he's pretty much spot on. It is once again just merely the back where you can see some of the excess robot mode kibble. However, this is something that I believe not even the MP figure could combat. So for a mass produced product, I for sure do believe that Hasbro have tried their utmost best. In terms of additional articulation, you are able to pivot the toes here up and down just to demonstrate that one here. You can hinge these up and down. I'm not entirely sure as to why you would want to do this as of course, if you do hinge it down, it is going to make him a little unstable, but it is something that you you can do especially maybe if you do have him posed along the shelf so overall as far as ape mode is concerned i think that once again it is a really nice job by hasbro and so some final thoughts optimus primal here i believe is heaps of fun he is certainly the most fun i've had from a mainline voyager in a very long time personally i think that he's probably going to be as good in some people's eyes as the earthrise optimus prime he truly is in my opinion one of the best released versions of optimus primal that we have ever gotten now i of course am merely just going by some of the reviews of some of the previously released figures as well as looking at some images as I have up until now never owned a version of Optimus Primal but I think that this one is the best in terms of mainline of course I'm not entirely sure how it would match up in terms of the masterpiece figure but as this is a mainline figure in the Voyager class I think that they have managed to accomplish a lot the figure in terms of his robot mode looks near enough spot on to his original Beast Wars character design I love the additional features such as the push out rocket launchers on the sides of his forearms I do also like how we do have the shoulder cannons at the back and I think that the swords are a really Really nice inclusion. I also believe that the paint deco, especially where the robot mode is concerned, is pretty much flawless. The articulation too is really well done and the transformation whilst is on the more simpler side, I believe adds to the overall enjoyability factor and it results in whilst a not perfect looking gorilla slash ape mode, it is definitely not the worst I've seen and I believe that it more than gets the job done. I love the texture and detail that we've got going on for the fur and as far as the ape mode is concerned, I think that it's one of the better beast inspired alt modes that I have ever seen. So Optimus Primal for sure gets a massive thumbs up for me for those of you who are collecting the kingdom line and for those of you who are a fan of beast wars you are going to want to add this figure to the collection as i believe he's going to perfectly round off our war for cybertron trilogy i thank you all so much for watching this review and i would love to hear your thoughts on this figure and the video down in the comment section below and until my next review i'll see you then thanks for watching